to clean coder youtube channel if you are new to this channel i will highly recommend you to subscribe to my channel as i make content related to software engineering system designing and data structures and algorithms today we are going to study this java equals and hash code contract so uh, if you will give any java interview i'm sure like this is going to be one of the questions which interviewer is going to ask for sure in order to check your understanding of java so uh, i'll highly recommend you to watch the complete tutorial in order to get complete understanding so let's start okay so the first thing is equals method okay so what is equals actually so if we see the object class in java uh, we know that every class implicitly extends object class right so equals and hash codes methods are coming implicitly in every java class including the ones we create right so uh, here he has created a example class money which has two parameters amount and currency code so next what he does is he creates two objects of this class money one is income and one is expenses and then he tries to compare these two objects right uh, using this income dot equals expenses so what the problem with this equals is this equals is something which is coming from object class right and if we don't provide our own implementation of the equals here how would like it will be correct right so this equals won't compare these two correctly we need to provide the equals which is specifically made for this money class okay so what he has written ahead let's read that is uh, we would expect income dot equals expense to return true but money class in its current form it won't okay so we'll be uh, expecting that these two uh, like objects are same or like income dot equals expenses should return true but actually when when we are going to run this on on an id it won't return true so this is what he is trying to say here the default implementation of equals in the object class says that equality is the same as object identity and income and expenses are two distinct instances okay so in the default implementation in the default implementation default implementation the equals has a simple meaning okay the equals method has a simple meaning it says that equality is same as object identity okay what is object identity so if they are same objects then i am going to say that they are equal if they are different objects then i am going to say they are different so uh, the new which we are creating uh, the op new object which we are creating uh, will allocate the memory separately from heap right so this is the object number one and this has separate space in the heap let's say this is heap of jvm so object one would be lying somewhere here and uh, next time when we create object two which is expenses so object two would be lying somewhere here okay so these are different different objects so they have different object identities so in the default implementation this is going to return false instead of true which we were expecting initially so we need to be careful uh, when we are making classes like this money in this case so here uh, we need to think of like how we can write equality equals like when when will two monies be equal uh, an obvious answer is like when the amount is same and currency code is also same let's say 500 rupees is equal to 
500 rupees right but we can't compare 500 rupees and equate it to 500 dollars right we need to take into account the currency code as well along with the amount obviously ignoring here the conversion factors which we have from uh, usd to inr and all uh, so yeah we need to provide an override for equal so let's uh, move forward to the next slide and check that out okay so this is the override which we are providing for equals okay so at the rate override annotation means we are overriding the default implementation of equals which is coming from the object class so here what we are doing is what does this mean if o is double equal to this it means both are same object that is uh, both the objects are pointing to same space in the heap okay so in that case uh, i am going to return true as per equals contract okay and the second if what does this mean if o is instance of money okay then it's fine but not in front of that means it's not an instance of money okay it is entirely a different class like uh, it's some other class to which i'm trying to compare my uh, money class so in that case i'm directly returning false so when i reach here it means uh, either this o is uh, money or it's one of the subclasses of money right so uh, equals with subclasses can also create some challenges and you need to be careful when you are having inheritance and uh, you are using the overrides of equals on top of that so in this case uh, let's assume like uh, it's one of the subclass and we are casting it to money in that case and keeping it in other and then uh, what we are doing here is currency code equals uh, we are doing a null check okay null check for the currency codes of both and uh, okay null check and then we are comparing like both the currency codes are same okay so both currency codes should also match and next uh, in the end we are comparing the amount as well as this boolean which we got from here okay so this is the equals implementation we should be using for the money class uh, discussed here okay so yeah that's the override for equals so let's uh, try to deep dive into the general contract which equal should always follow so that is written on the next slide so what contract equals should always follow okay let's try to read some of these lines so java standard edition defines the contract that our implementation of equals method must fulfill okay most of this criteria are common sense the equal method must be okay so here are certain properties like reflexive what does reflexive mean reflexive means like an object must be equal to itself okay and what does symmetric mean uh the symmetric relationship means if x equals to y then like the reverse should also be true like y should also be equals to x so this is the kind of symmetric relationship and then transitive what does transitive mean so transitive relationship is like if x dot equals y and y dot equals z then x also equals z okay so this is the transitive relationship which uh, equals contract must follow and the last point is consistent what does consistent means so consistent means the value of equals should change only if a property that is contained in equals changes okay there shouldn't be any randomness like you shouldn't be using some random function inside equals to make the two objects same so you shouldn't be using randomness at all it just means that it should be consistent so yeah this is what uh, equals contract is in detail 
So now let's uh, try to move to the next slide. So uh, the second part of this tutorial is focused on hash code. So uh, from the object class, we get two methods, right? The first one is equals, which we have discussed in detail. And the second one which we get is hash code. Okay, so this hash code method, what does it do? Okay, let's try to read this slide to understand that better. So hash code returns an integer representing the current instance of the class. We should calculate this value consistent with the definition of equality for the class. Thus, if we override the equals, we we should we also have to override hash code okay so what hash code generally does is like it tries to compute a hash value from the various parameters of the class like the instance variable it computes a hash value and that hash value is based upon certain hashing function and uh, in the end we generally get an integer out of that hashing function and that integer may or may not you uniquely represent an instance of the class like there could be uh, hash collisions like in hashing we know that uh, even really good hash functions can have some uh, hash collision so hash code is generally like that it returns an integer uh, which we can assume to represent the current instance of the class but it may represent some other instance of the class as well due to collisions and all okay so uh, he has mentioned that uh, whenever we override equals uh, overriding hash code becomes mandatory this is the gist actually so you need to be careful whenever you provide your own implementation of equals keep in the back of mind that hash code is also going to change and you need to provide the implementation for hash code as well and you can't you can't use the defaults okay so these two things you need to keep in mind so let's move forward with the contract of the hash code in detail. So this is the hash code contract. So what does it say? Let's go through the slide briefly. So Java standard edition also defines a contract for the hash code method. Okay. So a thorough look at it shows how closely a hash code and equals are actually. Okay. These two are these two methods are really, really closely related. So all three criteria in the hash code contract mention equals method in some way. Okay. So these two are not separate entirely. These two are kind of dependent upon each other. That's what like in each of the point of hash code equals this method equals is mentioned in some way right so uh, the first point is internal consistency so what does we mean by internal consistency so it means the value of hash code may only change if a property that is in equal changes okay so a property in equals change means some instance variable changes right the value of some instance variable change in that case equals change and in that case hash code may only change in that case only okay so now let's move to the second point equals consistency so objects that are equal to each other must return the same hash code okay this is actually the gist of hashing as well right let's say we have a hash function as uh, modulus 13 okay so if, if we have let's say two values right like 5 and 7 and 10 and let's say 13 okay so when when we'll compute the hash of all of these so what what will be the outcome so for 5 the outcome is going to be 8 for 7 the outcome is going to be 6 for 10 the outcome is going to be 3 and for 13 the outcome is going to be 0 okay so these numbers 
are actually a kind of hash code values which uh, uniquely represents these these classes okay or these objects this is what he means so a same hash code uh, may imply same object but it's not necessary because uh, let's say if we consider here as 26 and we try to compute its hash okay so its hash is going to come down to be 0 so 39 26 are not same actually but their hash is same so this is a kind of example of hash collision so uh, objects that are equal to each other must return the same hash code it just means that so equals consistency means uh, let's say 13 to itself should always return the same hash code okay 0 26 to itself since they are both are equal should always return to same hash code but uh, we should take into account hash collision as well so collision the next point covers that let's read that so unequal objects may have the same hash code okay so 13 and 26 is an example both are different objects but they have same they have a kind of same hash code okay so this is what we need to keep in mind so now let's uh, move forward okay so when do we overwrite equals and hash code okay when do we overwrite equals and hash code like how we'll know that now the moment has come to override equals and now the moment has come to override hash code so let's go through this slide to identify that so the second criteria of the hash code method contract has an important consequence okay if we override equals we must 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 override hash code okay this is by far the most widespread violation regarding the equals and uh, hash code contracts yeah like people forget to override hash code like they forget equals happily but they kind of try to like generally tend to forget to override the hash code and due to that this contract breaks so this is a kind of thing we need to be careful about so let's say we have a in class as team so here we have two instance variable as city and department okay and we are going to supply an override for equals so the team class overrides only equals but it still implicitly uses the default implementation of hash code as defined in the object class and this returns a different hash code for every instance we know that right so due to this this violates the second rule of the contract and now if we create two team objects both with the city new york and department marketing they'll be equal right but they they'll return different hash codes due to the default implementation of hash code which is coming from object so you need to be really really careful and you should uh, always remember that whenever you are overwriting equals whenever you are overriding equals always override hash code okay always override hash code please keep this in mind otherwise the contract would fail for sure okay so this is what uh, he is trying to uh, suggest here so now let's move to the next slide so like he hasn't answered yet when do we override equals and hash code okay so let's try to find an answer for this question now so generally we want to override either both of them or neither of them okay we just saw in previously that uh, under uh, undesired consequences might occur if we ignore this rule okay either override both or don't override at all okay so domain driven design can help us decide circumstance when we should uh, leave them be okay for entity classes for objects having an intrinsic identity the default implementation often makes sense okay 
However, for value objects, when we have like composite kind of uh, attributes, the classes with composite attributes, we should prefer uh, equality based on their properties, like the money class example we had in the beginning of the slide, right? So in that case, uh, Java or JVM can't know like how it can compare to money. So in that case, uh, we should supply our own override and hash code, right? Even if uh, they are two separate instances, right? So USD, let's say 50 should always be equal to USD 50, right? And rupees 100 should always be equal to uh, rupees 100, right? So we always need to supply override for the classes. Let's say this was the money class, right? This was the money class with two attributes as uh, one was currency and the second one was uh, value, okay? So for this, we need to provide override. So now let's move to the next slide. Okay, so in this slide, he wants to suggest that we should not always think about like how we should write an uh, hash code and equals method for any particular class. Actually, there are certain helpers which uh, we can use in order to like save some of our work. So generally we don't write the implementation of these methods by hand because humans by convention are like unreliable and they tend to induce maximum errors. Like maximum errors are manual errors, right? So we shouldn't be writing the methods by hand. As we, as we have seen, there are quite a few pitfalls. One common option is to let our IDE generate equals and hash code method. Okay, so Apache Common Lang and Guava have helper classes in order to simplify both uh, writing uh, both of these methods. And uh, even Lombok, uh, I'm sure like you must have used Lombok if you have worked on uh, Java related projects. So uh, Lombok provides us like easy to write annotations and uh, it uh, kind of uh, saves some code and we can write some code using annotations only like equals like writing at the rate equals and hash code on top of a class is going to add the equals and hash code method okay so this is what he is suggesting again uh, see equals and hash code always go together and they have a common annotation so this is what he is suggesting here so let's move to the next slide now so let's say you are not you are still not using the id to write the contract and you are still uh, relying on yourself to write the contract still uh, what you can do is there are certain uh, like verifying libraries in java which you can use to like verify the contract if the if the contract which you have written manually is correct or not so we want to check whether our implementation either to Java standard edition contract uh, to best practice, we can use uh, equals verifier library. Okay. So there is equals verifier maven test dependency. So you add this thing to POM and then you can make a test case like this. Okay. Add the retest equals hash code contract equals verifier for class. Mention the name of the class and verify. And then uh, it will tell us like whether the contract is correct or incorrect. So it is worth noting that equals verifier tests both the equals and the hash code methods. Okay. Equals uh, verifier is much more stricter than the Java standard edition contract. Okay. For example, it makes sure that our methods can't even throw NP. Also, it enforces that both methods or the class itself are final. Okay. So it's important to realize that the default configuration of equals verifier allows only immutable fields. This is a strict check than what the Java standard edition contract allows. Okay. So it adheres to the recommendation of domain driven design to make value objects immutable, okay? So there is something called domain-driven design and it is following its specification. 
and uh, there's something very specific to this verifier which you can go through and I'll skip this so let's move to the next slide now okay so this is the final slide and we'll be concluding here okay in this article we discussed the equals and hash code contracts we should remember always overwrite hash code if we overwrite equals okay be aware of the traps of extending classes that have overridden equals and hash code so as i told earlier when you extend some class let's say you are extended some you have extended some class from money class itself uh, let's say from money you extended pocket money okay you made pocket money class and you did something like this okay so here you supplied some additional parameter let's say uh, uh, apart from uh, value you supplied something like uh, let's say already the balance which you have like any other parameter let's say abc parameter you supplied here like two parameters are already coming from money which are uh, value and currency right and on top of that let's say there is another parameter abc now when you are going to compare the pocket money like one pocket money to another pocket money what do you need to take into consideration is like this third parameter should also come into the picture along with this two parameter these two parameters okay and you can't use the equals and uh, hash code coming from money otherwise this is going to be a rns implementation it is going to induce some bugs in our system so during uh, inheritance or extending classes you need to be a bit more careful okay uh, consider using ide or like third party libraries for generating equals and hash code methods and uh, you can put equals verifier uh, test also to test our implementation so yeah uh, this is all uh, we have regarding hash code and equals so most of the things i have taken from this tutorial on this website so you can refer or read this website if you want even more details so once again thanks for watching this video hey guys do check out this instagram channel the encoder community for all the jokes and memes related to software engineering thanks a lot